Okay, in this video, I'm going to do something slightly new and slightly different. This is, I suppose it goes hand in hand with question 18 on page 73 of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. But if you're not doing my Applied Maths course, well that's okay, it, it makes no difference. Now, we're doing a, project, a, a question on projectiles. So, we'll say, I'll talk about this in more detail now, but essentially what we're doing is, if this is your projectile, we want to find which angle here will give you a maximum range. The angle will never change. Alright, so uh, the reason I'm doing this separately is I'm going to do it via uh, differentiation and calculus. And it's something that you probably won't understand until you've finished fifth year in school. But it's not that difficult to do. And um, once you do this, this is a very neat way of doing, uh, of, of actually proving this. So, yeah, let's just, let's just try it. So, of course, what I'm going to do before I start this, uh, do I need to use my unit vectors? Let me think now. No, I'm not going to use my, my unit vectors here, I don't really need them. So the first thing I'm going to do is start off with what you've asked. I'm going to talk about my x-axis and my y-axis. So, u, v, a, s, t, u, v, a, s, t. And plug in the quantities that we know. We know that this is u cos alpha, this is u sin alpha, this is 0, this is g, this is t, and this is t. Uh, look, okay, just to be very rigorous, just to show why it's u cos alpha and u sin alpha, it is the vector u, and these are my unit vectors i hat and j hat like so. But of course, the vector u is in both dimensions, it's not just in a single dimension. So it is a resultant vector made up of two component unit vectors. And they are this one here, this one here. Remember, they are the two vectors which, when added together, will give you u. If you call this theta, you know that sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is u. Therefore, the opposite is equal to u sine theta. And similarly, the adjacent is equal to u cos theta. So that's, we'll say, so this one here is u cos theta i hat. And this one here is equal to u sine theta j hat like so. Now I'll do that very quickly because it's something I'm probably, I'm sure you're sick to death of at this stage. Now, what is the condition for maximum range? The condition is that the particle is no longer in the air. So s sub y is equal to zero. So we need, a, we need an expression for s sub y here. So it's ut plus a half at squared, so it's u sine alpha t plus a half g t squared. And we know that's equal to zero. So let's just do that. So we say u sine alpha t plus a half g t squared is equal to zero. Like so. Let's just solve this. This is a polynomial because, because it has powers. The highest degree is 2, the highest, so it's a polynomial of degree 2, which we call a quadratic. So I'm just going to take out t to solve this. And if you have two things multiplied together to get 0, one of them must be 0. So in this case, t is equal to 0, or t is equal to minus 2u sine alpha over g. That's something we proved in question 18 on the on page 73. So it's I'm just going to note this down here for myself. Over g or is it 2g? Yeah, that's g. All right. So we know that at that time, well, of course, think about it now. At t is equal to zero, the particle hasn't been projected, so it's still on the ground. And this is the time at which the particle is also on the ground the second time. So it's when it hit the ground after at its maximum range. So we now know the time at which it's at its maximum range. So let's just plug that in up here. So it's minus 2u sine alpha over g, like so. Now we're trying to find the maximum range, so we need an expression for the distance in the x direction. So it's ut plus a half at squared. So it's u cos alpha t plus a half zero t squared, so it's just u cos alpha t. And next thing we're going to do is plug in our value for t. Like 
like so. We just multiply that out. That T, by the way, that's incorrect. Over G. Now, the next thing you need to do is make a substitution. If you look in your mathematical tables, you'll find that sine 2A is equal to 2 sine A cos A. And if you look here, we have 2 sine A cos A, so we have sine 2A. That's actually, I said that was theta, was it or alpha? Time. There, like so. Alright, now that's S sub X. This is the formula for the range. All right, that is the formula for all the ranges. So, uh, yeah, that's that never changes. If you want to find the distance traveled, just plug in the angle of projection and the initial speed, and that'll 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 give you that. Or it's for maximum maximum range. Now, this is where we're going to do some calculus. And if you have a function, and we do have a function, we have the function we have here is s sub x, a function of u and alpha is equal to minus u squared sine 2 alpha over g. If that doesn't make any sense to you, look at my video on functions. Now all that means is the ingredients for the distance are u and alpha. The only thing is it depends on are u and alpha. g is a constant, so that doesn't matter, and sine is just a function, so it doesn't matter. All right, that's a function. Now, in order to maximize a function, or minimize it, you differentiate it and set it to zero. So, what are we trying to maximize? Well, we want to find the angle for maximum projection. And this here is, of course, it's a function of u and alpha, two variables. But we want to find the maximum angle, or the angle for maximum projection. So for maximum, or a minimum, differentiate, and set to zero. This is something you'll have done in your mathematics course. Uh, to be honest, it's something I remember when I went to college, it's something I'd completely forgotten. And it's used very regularly in college. All right, so, you know, it's not, it's not, that, it's not difficult at all. So we're just gonna do that now. now. Of course, I'm after running out of space, so I'm just gonna rub out a lot of this stuff here and rewrite it. Just bear with me for a moment. Bear with me now. So just to rewrite that, we know that we have so far that s sub x is a function of u and alpha, and that's equal to minus u squared sine 2 alpha over g. Now I said I wanted to differentiate it with respect to alpha, so I went to get ds d alpha. So ds d alpha is equal to well look u squared doesn't matter because it's, it doesn't it do, it's not a function of alpha so it's minus u squared over g like so differentiate sine this is the let me think now the pro, no the uh, chain rule so it's differentiate sine we get cosine and then you differentiate the argument here so 2 alpha becomes 2 All right, so is that correct? Differentiate it. Yeah, that's correct. Now just rearrange that, so we're going to get minus two u squared cos two alpha over g. We want to set that to zero. Now look, do we have any things there that don't matter? We do. We have g because it's a constant. Just get rid of it, we can cross it out. If you want, you can think about bringing it up here and multiplying it zero where, where it just dies and so do all of these here. So what we're left with is that ds d alpha, ds d alpha max is equal to cos two alpha is equal to zero. All right, now the next thing we need to do is think about our unit circle. Uh, yeah, 
in its circle. Let me think now. Okay, so what about cosine? The cos of naught is 1, and the cos of 1 is 0. Is that right? I can often never think of these. One sec there now, I'll just check that. Yes, the cos of naught is 1. And here goes to, we'll say minus 1, here goes to 0 again. So the maximum for cos is, uh, is 1, and the minimum is 0. So when is cos 0? All right, when is cos 0? It's only, at, like, because we want to find out when cos 2 alpha is equal to 0. And we know it's 0 here at 90 degrees, and here it's 0 at 100, or at uh, 270 degrees, like that. Or you could say at pi over 2, and, uh, of course, what is it, 3 pi over 2. So we know that 90 degrees or pi over 2, that cos is equal to 0. So we know this, what? That cos alpha, cos 2 alpha, is equal to 0, is equal to uh, when 2 alpha, let's say, when 2 alpha is equal to pi over 2. Does that make any sense? So when, like, cos of 90 is is 0, that's the same as cos of pi over 2, so 2 alpha must be equal to 90 degrees or pi over 2, so therefore alpha is equal to pi over 4. Like so. So in order to get the maximum, you differentiate your function, set it to 0, and in this case, in order to get maximum distance, you elevate your projectile to an angle of 45 degrees. So that was that was kind of mad, I suppose. I, I definitely found doing that the first time quite difficult. But it's the, the we'll say the method never changes, and you'll definitely use that a lot in the future if you're doing maths, physics, engineering, applied maths, any of those courses. And yeah, look, that's that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.